My name is Cheryl Erickson and I'm the Indigenous Focused ECE instructor with Louis Riel Vocational College. Today in Child and Family Diversity, we're going to look at Chapter 2 and supporting families around issues of attachment and trust. But before we get started, I just want to remind you to please read Chapter 2 as this video is not a replacement for your daily chapter readings. So when we look at attachment and trust, uh, we realize that uh, attachment is a lasting emotional relationship uh, between, an between an infant and a primary caregiver. And it really sets the tone uh, for future, um, for development uh, of a child as well as future relationships. So here in, in Manitoba, a lot of studies have surrounded um, secure attachment. And in the last few years, um, it has been implemented uh, that centers train a staff, so they attend that circle of attachment workshop and training, which really works to support families around um, issues of attachment. So um, working towards secure attachments um, and helping build that trust within um, children. So we know that attachment is a two-way process. It really uh, works with the primary caregiver and the infant being in sync. Um, building those strong relationships and we know that when secure attachments aren't formed that it does have lifelong um, impacts on that child as far as um, feeling safe and secure uh, and in particular in children it affects um, how they're developing. So again, attachment is, is a really an, an emotional process. Um, healthy attachments uh, do provide uh, the foundation for later intellectual development. And so what we know is that um, um, a really positive uh, attachment experiences is going to promote um, or produce hormones or neurotransmitters and what those do is they give that infant that infant um, that sense of well-being and when they feel good they feel safe it reinforces certain pathways within that brain for positive mental health growth so it's a really important um, a really important factor and that's why we really want to work with uh, children and form those really good relationships and attachments and hope that we can help all families uh, develop that attachment process with their child. We know that secure attachments um, come from um, synchronous relationships, so working both ways where parent, um, you know, basically when a baby is born, we have that uh, sense of love um, for that child. So really attachments come out of uh, a lot of emotional feelings and love uh, for that child. And uh, as that baby is, is growing and developing, if the adult is in tune with their needs, and in tune meaning if the baby is crying because they're hungry, the adult picks up those signs and signals and the adult feeds that baby, or cuddles, sings, rocks, uh, meets all their needs so that that infant is feeling safe and secure. Um, that's a, forming an attachment. If an infant is uh, not having their needs met and so is crying because they're, they have hunger pains um, or that diaper goes uh, unchanged, uh, that baby grows to learn that the world isn't uh, a very nice place, a very uh, safe place. And so from there, uh, unhealthy attachments are formed and those unhealthy attachments affect development and affect, uh, again, affect uh, a child's uh, lifelong growth. So we do want that trust to build uh, within uh, those relationships. We want, you know, that baby to feel um, like their needs are met, that they're satisfied, that they're loved and cared for. Um, they're safe. And so adults just with those positive uh, responses to those baby signals, crying, and we, we learn uh, in healthy attachments with our infant, we learn to pick up their daily schedules, their cues, you know, why they fuss at certain periods, 
um, what's not typically normal. So we, we learn that. That's that in sync type of relationship. Um, and, and again, how that trust is formed is really important. So um, I can't say enough about the importance of, of developing trust over mistrust uh, because again, uh, it, it does affect that uh, brain development and those, uh, those um, pathways being formed, which is a really important uh, process in, in the early years. So when we look at signs of attachment and, and normal signs of attachment uh, for an infant, uh, we know that, um, you know, often uh, pregnant moms are talking to their infants uh, before they're born and so often when babies are born they're recognizing their mom's voice. So that's a good sign that you know attachment is, is already uh, in the process of being formed when they can distinguish that sound and also that uh, studies have shown that they can pick up the scent uh, of their, their moms as well which is really really neat. Um, another sign that there is a, a healthy attachment is stranger anxiety. Not all babies, but most babies will experience some anxiety when they um, are uh, put in, um, when a stranger enters the room, or often when uh, infants are transitioning into a childcare center, they will. Um, have some anxiety because they don't recognize the people in the room to be safe. They will automatically go to that person they know is safe that they trust, which is usually a primary caregiver. And so we know that attachments also can be formed with not only the mom, but also other um, um, primary caregivers or parents. So a baby can attach to mom, can attach to dad, can attach to grandparents, uh, and can attach to uh, caregivers in a, in a child care setting or uh, a care um, setting. So we know that, you know, those are typically um, healthy, uh, shows healthy attachments. If an infant is showing uh, different signs when uh, a stranger uh, um, enters the room and they are angry at the parent or um, seem unsure of what to do, those can also be signs that maybe that attachment hasn't uh, formed in a positive way. So they're almost, it's, it's like a confused um, attachment. So typically if mom leaves the room and there's a stranger in the situation, they'll become very, very distraught. And when mom re-enters the room, they'll be, um, you know, run to the, run to the parent, cry, um, you know, be so happy uh, to see mom. So again, that's uh, the uh, appropriate attachment. If they seem confused when mom re-enters, um, that's kind of a sign of, you know, a, a confused uh, attachment. They don't have the, the uh, almost the senses developed to, to go see that parent, to be happy to see that parent as they re-enter um, that space. Some uh, obstacles to attachments. So um, when uh, an attachment uh, or reasons why maybe an attachment isn't forming um, like it should. So um, things that can get in the way, a parent might be unhappy about the pregnancy um, or with each other. So, you know, it's a situation maybe where that pregnancy isn't, is it planned? Um, the parents aren't really uh, responding to that in a, in a happy way. There's more stress related to it. Maybe the relationship isn't uh, functioning in a positive way. And so um, all those emotions are getting in the way when that child is born uh, to develop that attachment or even to have that attachment during the pregnancy is, is often where attachment for, for moms start. We're attached to that baby as soon as we find out uh, we're pregnant and it becomes a, a, a human uh, already and there's a lot of emotions there. So there's a disconnect um, already uh, forming within that uh, pregnancy. The father may not be in the relationship with the mother. Uh, so having said that, uh, that's a lot of stress on a mom uh, 
perhaps being a, a single parent already, um, um, a lot of worries about that and not having somebody there to support um, the, the mom in that pregnancy or in raising that baby. So that can get in the way, again, of forming that attachment early on in the pregnancy and can carry over once that infant is born. Um, a lot of people find that it's hard to love something that you can't see or touch. So even though, um, you know, that baby is, is developing uh, in the womb, um, sometimes um, women don't get a sense that uh, about the pregnancy until that baby starts moving and then they realize a little bit more oh my gosh it's moving it's you know it's alive it's growing and develop it's more reality sets in but to take it a step further until they actually see it um, they're they're not uh, it, it's not real so attachment uh, again it early on in that pregnancy isn't forming um, like it should be and uh, maybe it's off to a slower start, so to speak. Uh, there are situations where the birth itself might be unpleasant. Um, um, you know, cesarean, lots of recovery. Um, there could be complications or issues, which um, kind of priorize itself over um, um, the pregnancy and the birth. So that could be an issue in itself that you're, that a mom is dealing with more so um, and the discomfort within that, that it's um, um, affecting how they're caring for the infant. So there's things like that. Uh, postpartum depression is another uh, issue that sometimes will affect um, how uh, a baby's attachment to the parent is formed. There, there's a disconnect there, um, depression, and it's hard to uh, function. And it's if you can't care for yourself in that particular situation, it would be hard uh, to care for somebody else. So it's knowing uh, to see these signs as well and, and to uh, get for referrals in place for these moms so that uh, they can get the necessary help. We've talked about uh, temperament and attachment as well um, in previous chapters, or we've talked about temperament regarding children, slow to warm, easy, uh, difficult. And so um, you have babies that born that fit, that are, that are fitting into these uh, categories as well. And when babies are born, it's really a lot of figuring out um, at first of, of what they need. And so um, it makes it a little bit more complicated when temperaments uh, come into, uh, uh, when they come into a temperament as well, because then you're really uh, trying to figure out this complicated little being. So we do see easy being, you know, that uh, it's easy to care for. Um, you feed them, they sleep, they cry, um, you pick them up. Um, they're comforted and um, they're just an easier infant to care for. Uh, slow to warm, uh, again, you're really trying to figure out as well as, as difficult slow to warm, meaning, um, you know, you, you might not be able to, uh, you're, you're trying to meet their needs, but maybe that attachment is slowly coming, warming up to, uh, to them. They're warming up to you. Remember, it's a synchronous, uh, synchronous type of relationship. You're trying to f figure out a little bit about what their needs are. Are you hungry? Are you sleepy? Is your diaper wet? You just want to be held? those type of things to a difficult, uh, maybe even colicky baby, where um, a little bit more time is uh, needed to, um, to really um, find out what it is uh, that that baby needs so that you're meeting their needs. So at the end of the day, it's really meeting all their needs, regardless of what that temperament might be. What uh, are the effects of childcare on attachment? Um, it's, it's really good to know and, and to try to uh, develop some rapport with that family and, and get those um, transition visits into the center. So those transition visits are going to be key um, to making that child comfortable within that child care setting as you uh, 
uh, as that parent eases back into the workplace. So within uh, those transitions, it's really kind of getting to know the family. And if you find that, you know, there is situations where there is family stress going on, if, if there is stress within that family relationship, it could again affect um, that attachment process. If the family isn't working uh, together, there's a uh, lack of communication or difficulties, uh, they're, they're not functioning as, as a unit. And we really need to work towards uh, figuring out what we can do, uh, what resources or supports are available, because it's going to be key um, to how you're going to be attaching uh, with that infant as well. There's going to be protective factors involved as well. As far as um, that step in transitioning a child into a daycare center, there's a lot of fear of the unknown. You're potentially taking your child into an environment where, uh, to, into an environment of people that you don't necessarily know. And so you're really putting a lot of trust. So you, you, you are protecting your child. You want what's best uh, for that child. So you want to know that, that it's good people that uh, are going to be caring for your child. So again, I have to say that transition is key and, and that transition should be lots of opportunities for the child and the parent to interact with caregivers in that environment. So um, I like to see a healthy transition into a child care center where a parent and brings their child uh, for meal times uh, because it's different feeding your child at home uh, to group care. So that not only is the child going to get comfortable eating maybe at a small toddler table or a different style high chair, but the parents realize what that atmosphere looks like as well. The child can get comfortable in those types of seats. Uh, transition visits around nap time, transition visits around free play is, is really important as well. And where we're having those conversations, getting to know the family and the family is getting to know uh, the child care um, staff. And we also have to take into consideration caregivers and parenting's different roles because there's a lot of uniqueness uh, to that, um, not only in the workforce, but in family culture. So I have seen a lot of, of times where transition visits, uh, it's not mom bringing baby into that transition visit, it's dad because of how maternity leave and paternity leave works together. Uh, I've experienced grandparents uh, coming into these uh, roles as well. So really finding out what that dynamics is in the home can really make it more comfortable for that child to transition into uh, the daycare environment. So before we close off, just some um, things that we discussed uh, when we went through uh, chapter two um, lessons. So think about ideas, thoughts, or feelings about working with families around the issue of attachment. So, um, you know, what are your thoughts? What are your ideas? What kinds of um, uh, approaches would you uh, look at at making that transition a little bit more smoother? What types of questions um, would you have for parents? Uh, what kinds of information would you share with them regarding those transition experiences? And as an ECE uh, student, or if you've worked in a childcare facility before, what experiences do you have um, as far as supporting uh, parents in attachment uh, to their infants? So just some thoughts to think about and maybe jot down and uh, we can uh, discuss these uh, at another time. So this does conclude our uh, discussion on chapter two uh, regarding supporting families in attachment. Please do see uh, your instructor if you have any questions regarding uh, chapter two, as well as check in to ensure that you haven't missed any handouts or assignments pertaining to chapter two. <clears throat>